Hi YouTube, we have some videos here that you might find interesting. Let's go through some of them. This is not a church. It was never a church. And if you give me three minutes, I'm going to absolutely turn your world upside down and blow your mind. You may have heard about a strange story going around that we were a part of an advanced civilization that fell apart due to some kind of invasion. And that incredible buildings like these, surrounded by all these smaller buildings, are actually part of two completely different worlds and times. If you're under the impression that structures like these can be built in our modern times, think again, because they can't, and they haven't been for hundreds of years. There are countless buildings like this scattered all over the world that we repurposed as banks, churches, universities, and state buildings. You'll also notice that a lot of these buildings have the word founded etched in the side instead of built. That's because we found them. We didn't make them. So let's talk about what these buildings were really used for before we repurposed them. It's becoming painfully obvious that our religions and our religious institutions do not serve us and in fact were built to control us. We're starting to realize that many of the stories we've been told about our religions have been twisted and corrupted to imprison our minds and our spirits. Well, it gets so much crazier and worse than that. Because these buildings were never churches. They were healing centers and amplification centers for our meditation and prayers to make our thoughts reality, word to flesh. The painted glass windows and all the geometric shapes were meant to amplify those frequencies outward and inward to heal us and create a protective force field around the building and around the empire. Going back to this picture, you see that circle right there? That's cymatics. Just go look up a video where they play sounds on sand and then the sand takes different shapes. It looks exactly the same as that. This architecture is a frozen masterpiece of music which caused frequencies to emanate within and without to have all sorts of amazing and powerful effects. Yes, all the old stories of Atlantis and Tartaria are absolutely true and you can see the evidence of it just by going to one of these churches. But it gets even crazier than that. Look at the domes here. Look at those little circular balls. These are conductors, okay? We don't have a cross or the moon and the star here, and there's a good reason why. I'm just going to put this ugly modern church in the background while we talk about this so this can really sink in for you. All of our religious symbols like crosses and moons and stars were actually just carefully crafted antenna. They were shaped that way to pull energy into the building. And now just think about how you have defined your entire life based on these symbols. Defended them. Fought other people over them. Thought you were worshipping a god through that symbol. They are laughing in our face. So it is said that these structures were actually built by previous civilizations. And one of them is Tartaria. If you look further, that's an interesting rabbit hole on its own. But my question is, what if there is or there are civilizations that came before Tartaria that we are not aware of? It's just fascinating. He's 100% woke. They supposed to be putting medicine in America to help us feel better, to help you live better. But these motherfuckers don't give a fuck about the medicine. They out making their motherfucking yeah. money. They when these rappers get killed, not incidental. Somebody made $100 million and now don't have to talk to that artist or none of their crew. Don't have to validate none of their contracts. Now only got to deal with the mama. Only got to see her once a year, and it's over. We found out that all conspiracy theories, there's a nugget of truth in there. Anytime people that tell the truth is attacked, that's called the dark ages. In our industry, who pays you is who tells you what narrative you're allowed to use. Wow. Do you have any idea who shot should? I'm pretty sure it should knows who shot should. But if the police say nobody shot him, I believe nobody shot him. And if nobody shot him, that's the same nobody that shot Tupac. And if nobody shot Tupac, it's the same nobody that shot MLK. And if nobody shot him, that's the same person that shot Malcolm X too. It's a lot of nobodies out there and nobody minds if nobody comes up missing, right? Mm -hmm. That don't bother nobody, does it? Yeah. They be having these big ass mansion parties and the mansion party, the whole mansion is a party. And then it's a separate party in the little rooms. You be looking at all the goddamn rooms and you around and look in the raw room and shit.
If you know, you know. Look, I like Cat Williams. I think he's a great stand-up comedian. But I can't help but think that if he can say the things he is saying, exposing people, certain groups, I think there's more to it. I mean, there are whistleblowers that if they get the chance to say what they said, some bad things happen to them. And yet, Cat Williams is still here and he's actually becoming more famous because of the uh, things that he is exposing. What was that, Taylor? We make music for a purpose. It is music it is that by, by even the act of listening to it, you are participating in a satanic ritual. Okay, Swifties, we all know by now that Zena LaVey, you know, the Satanists, but you heard what they were talking about. They said by even listening to the music, you partake in a Satanic ritual. You ever heard of a rap sigil? Listen. It's a thing where they, one, murder somebody, two, record the murder, three, chop the audio up and sample it, and return to the murder scene and rap where they murder somebody at. They put it on a mixtape, and that creates a sigil. They sell the mixtape, people listen to it, and boom, the sigil is charged, and they make a lot of profit from it. Is this what Lucifer, I mean, Lil Uzi Vert was talking about his concert? Obviously, all y'all is going to hell, right with me. So, you heard the song a million times, and you didn't even know. That's up, but I still love It's crazy, because now them lyrics are starting to make sense. I don't really care if you cry. I just know you should have never lied. She said she's not afraid to die. Just a stretch. Now, one of the most well-known examples of this is from this song, Bad Things by Colts. In the background of this song is actually the infamous last speech of Jim Jones. You know, the cult leader who poisoned his entire cult. At certain points of the song, you can actually hear screams from the children in the cult. Scroll if you don't want to hear it. Now, J. Cole went on to sample this song and use it. She knows. Now, he claims that he had no knowledge of this, but it's too late now. Who knows the amount of songs that we've listened to not knowing the true meaning? If you've seen They Clone Tyrone, you'd see that they are um, telling truths in plain sight. One of them shows how they control people through music. So... What this means basically is whatever you listen to, especially on a, um, on a daily basis, it affects you in some way or another, whether it's how you think, your mood, your attitude. So I guess you just got to be careful on what you listen to and how it can affect you. Try to uh, be more aware and mindful of how a certain music affects you, but don't let it control you. Get a load of this. Just a joke. After all these years, I've never met the Olsen Comedy. twins. He introduced me to them. I said to him, how do I tell them apart? He says, Ashley swallows. How is this funny? Is it true that you used to give Mary Kate acting lessons? He'd tell her, act like this never happened. Bob Saget, who ran and killed the girl in 1990? What kind of joke is that? And it's crazy, because it seems to be the theme with all these young stars. I may end up running off with you myself, you know. That's what Steven says. Steven, it's Steven Spielberg? Yeah. Hi, Steven, I love you. Second best again. Story of my life with women, yeah. She even talks about being at those Hollywood parties. Well, I've grown up very fast, and it's not very normal to see a nine-year-old at a big Hollywood party drinking. You heard that right. At nine years old, she was at Hollywood parties getting drunk. And it's crazy how it's such a common theme for these childhood stars to get institutionalized for acting out. These roasts can be fun on the surface. And if you're only watching it for entertainment, go ahead. I can't blame you. I watched them too. But just make sure that it doesn't affect you in a negative way and if you are the conspiratorial type you'd see that they're just mocking us they're mocking you they tell the truth and then you hear the uh, laugh track just so you would have this idea that it's only a joke or if you try to press them on it they'll just say it's just a joke that's just it i think it's just a justification of them 
actually telling you what's happening and it's an inside joke because remember um, it's a club and you're not part of it Harap-harapan ang ginawang pandoduro at pagbabanta ng China Coast Guard sa mga Pilipinong sundalo nang harangin nila ang resupply mission na halos nasa tabi na ng PRP Sierra Madre umaga noong June 17 sa may Ayungin Shoal. Sa loob ito ng exclusive economic zone ng Pilipinas. Taga China Coast Guard ang nakasuot ng orange na life vest na ito na makikitang sumisigaw at may hawak pang palakul. Samantalang mga nakabrown fatigue ang mga sundalong Pilipino. Sa video ito na ipinadala ng Armed Forces of the Philippines, kinalian na ng China ang inflatable boat ng Pilipinas na sinisikap bawiin. Bari rinig din ang mga malalakas na sirena. Nakalapit na sa mga oras na yon ang mga inflatable boats ng Pilipinas sa BRP Sierra Madre. Pero hindi siya pinapakinggan ng China Coast Guard sa halip. May makikita pang sinungkit na itim na bag ang China Coast Guard sa bangka ng Pilipinas. Ayon sa AFP, pitong matataas na kalibreng baril ang ninakaw ng China at hindi pa binabalik pati na mga cellphone ng mga sundalo. Ang dalawang inflatable boat ng Pilipinas inipit ng limang bangka ng China at sinampahan pa nila. Parang mga pirata na po sila dun sa mga ginawa nilang actions na yan. Habang nagkakagulo, dalawang barko ng China ang biglang nagbukas ng laser papunta sa mga Pilipinong sundalo. Pero hindi lamang laser ang ginamit ng China, pati tear gas. Sa video ito, makikita ang naputulan ng hinlalaki na si Seaman, First Class Underwater Operator Jeffrey Facundo. Habang ginagamot, makikita ang bangka ng China na lumalapit pa. Sikiran, sir! Sikiran, sikiran! Oh, tropa natin yan! Sa isa pang video, nanunutok ng mga matatalas sa sandata ang China Coast Guard. Binuhusan sila ng tubig ng mga sundalong Pilipino mula sa BRP Sierra Madre. Maya-maya, isa sa mga Chinese Coast Guard pinagsasaksak ang inflatable boat ng mga Pinoy. Sa itaas na bahagi ng video, nakikipaghatakan ang mga Pilipino sa China Coast Guard. Sa isang bahagi ng kaguluhan naman, makikita may binabato ang mga China Coast Guard. Ang isang inflatable boat ng Pilipinas na ito, napapunta rin sana sa Sierra Madre, dinikitan ng dalawang China Coast Guard para ilayo sa ayungin. Bandang alas 8 ng umaga, humingi na ng rescue ang Philippine Navy sa Philippine Coast Guard. Nasa 12 nautical miles o 24 kilometers noon, ang BRP Bagakay at BRP Cabra ng Philippine Coast Guard. Pero maging ang medical evacuation, hinarang at hinaras. Tatlong Hubei Missile Patrol ng China ang pumalibot sa medical evacuation team ng PCG habang inikot-ikutan ng mga bangka ng Pilipinas na nakikipagnegosasyon sa China. Mula ng harangin ng China Coast Guard ang Rory Mission sa Ayungin Shoal umaga ng June 17, inabot ng hanggang gabi ang rescue operation at pakikipagnegosasyon na ginawa ng Philippine Coast Guard. Alas 11 na ng gabi ng pumayag ang China, na-evacuate si Facundo na naputulan ng hinlalaki pero patuloy na maaligid ang mga barko ng China. Sa di kalayuan, kita rin ang hospital Navy ship nila. Nakapaligid din ang iba pang mga bangka ng China Coast Guard na kinukunan pa ang Philippine Coast Guard galing sa BRP Cabra. Matapos ang insidente, ganito na ang naging itsura ng mga inflatable boat ng Philippine Navy. Basag-basag ang salamin, sira-sira ang equipment at punit-punit na ang inflatable boat. Pinapurihan naman ni EFA Chief of Staff General Romeo Browner ang katapangang ipinakita ng mga Pilipinong sundalo at pagtitimpi ayon kay Browner, hindi layo ng Pilipinas na magkagera. Emil? So this is a news that's been broadcasted here in the Philippines and it's about the battle in the South China Sea and whose territory is it really? But us here in the Philippines, we all know that it's part of our territory. But the thing is, uh, China just does what they want to do with it. They even uh, blast fishermen, local fishermen with uh, water cannons. And I hate to say bad things about the government, not yet at least, but 
something has to be done about it. And as long as it's not getting the right attention, the proper attention it gets, it, this will just go on. This will just continue. I have looked at this picture a thousand times. And I cannot tell you whether it's real or not, but in my opinion, it looks to be authentic. And I know that's crazy, but is this proof that the old world existed and that the Bible and everything we've heard about with all flesh being corrupt and abomination and fallen angels manipulating human DNA with animal DNA and creating things that look like this, where God said, uh uh, Noah, prepare the ark. We are flooding everything. We are getting rid of all things that are not pure and not godly. I want you to look at this picture and tell me it looks legit to me. What do you think? It's a weird picture, to say the least, but without any context, all we can really have are speculations. I mean, for all we know, they could be having a Halloween party or a costume party back then. Uh, when this picture was taken but we can't really know what happened um, in our history simply because they can easily manipulate it i saw this video where it says that it only takes three generations to erase the past and create a new one so for all we know this is just a new picture that's been manipulated to make it look old so they can perpetuate a narrative. I guess we'll never know. Something really f***ing strange is happening in Hollywood right now. A few months ago, I made a video talking about how Simon Cowell's reappearance was quite strange and about how many people truly believe that the man who returned was not Simon Cowell. Similarly, in recent events, people are claiming that the person in this video is not Britney Spears. In fact, if you pause the video on the frame right before her hand passes by her face, you can clearly see that there's a filter being placed on Britney Spears' face and it goes away for only a split moment. And the most recent event of all, Jamie Foxx was unseen or heard from for quite some time, only to reappear in this video, apologizing to his fans, claiming that he had a mysterious medical emergency, which he would not identify. I went to hell and back and my road to recovery uh, had some potholes as well. And people are already saying that this person who returned is not Jamie Foxx. I ain't no conspiracies, that ain't Jamie. I am merely sharing public opinion. What do you guys think is going on? Let me know in the comments. I used to think that with celebrities like these, after the director says, God, uh, the job is over, the job is done, you know? Um, they go back to their private lives and just go about their day. But what if even after the ca uh, the camera is rolling, they're still acting? Remember the artist named Prince? Even after uh, he is performing, he can still be the artist named Prince. Meaning they could still be acting whether they're on a set or not their lives are still in control and i think that's one of the reason possible reason why some celebrities would rather themselves so they can um, escape or get away from the public's eye so they can live their own lives actual lives i think let's say uh, jamie fox is just a character I don't think that he is an actual person. The actual person might be named something else. And every time we see a celebrity outside, they're just acting. The Evian theory. That's the one with the mouth and like the it's cool mountain, bottle. Yeah. yeah, and it's mad expensive, right? Just expensive is like Fiji and, and all that other bullshit. The theory goes, Evian is the rich people water. Rich oh, people shit. are trying to gatekeep this water because it's so good for you. It has natural electrolytes. It's literally made naturally in the in the mountains, fam. Yeah. And it's naturally alkaline. It does taste the best. And it tastes good. It tastes fresh. Uh -huh. Now, this is the healthiest water. All the other water. I watch videos on this shit. 
they tested like harmful things that could be in other water, even spring water and all these other brands, Arrowhead water, all these different brands, they're not necessarily good for you. But the Evian water is one of the few that is. Now, the theory is yeah. rich people made it that expensive so that they have their water supply. Okay. And when they go to the store, they know, oh, all these poor people aren't going to buy it. But let's just keep it this high so that we can buy it whenever we're in town. Now, what is Evian backwards? Look, I think if you're rich, rich, you would have knowledge of things that's not available to the rest of us. For example, if you were rich, you would have a... Uh, a chef cooking food for you so that you can avoid all these chemicals in the food that we're eating nowadays same goes with water whether it's Evian or any other brand if you're rich rich I don't really think you would drink bottled water even if you're um, even if you're outdoors or anywhere else but it may be true that this is the lesser evil drinking Evian as opposed to any other uh, bottled water but what do you guys think? I just think they have access to other forms of or other information that's not easily accessible to us what do you think? Okay, I might be reaching, but what's going on here on Etsy? Why are these children's paintings so high? And why is there multiple of them? Including one labeled pizza oil painting. Not to mention AI generated pictures of kids eating wings and pizza. Going for around 3 to 4K. And even pictures of pizza for 3K. And there's this one labeled coming soon for 51K. And the person's name is Earth's Dark Author. I'm not saying anything is going on here, but let me know what y'all think is going on here. As we all know, this doesn't just apply to Etsy. Um, any other platforms can have these um, symbols. And I think one of the reasons for them is to let um, these people, the one that's in this type of club, in this type of group, to let them know that uh, this platform can be used for whatever transaction they are using or just to let them know that this is something they can also use for whatever purpose they use it uh, they can use it to these are scary what if theories what if everything behind you disappears but when you look back it reappears what if our shadows were warning us about something in the dark because they disappear in it what if you're the only person left on earth and everyone and everything around us are just imaginary people and things we've made up so that we don't feel lonely? What if every time you think you hear your name being called, it's actually just your family trying to wake you up from a coma? What if the meteor that killed the dinosaurs was actually a UFO and we're the aliens? So going by what she's saying, it could also mean that I generated her and whatever hurt content is saying is something I made up if that's the case then who's controlling it what does it actually mean so it's it, it, it can bring you to a place where you would think about your own existence and it's a good mental exercise uh, just don't get caught up in it just be aware and mindful of how a certain content is affecting you. Make sure that it's not ruining your own sanity and all that. If it's just for entertainment, then take it as that. Just for entertainment. The Great Wall of China is a lie. There's a theory that says the Great Wall of China was actually built by the Tartarian Empire. This might sound crazy, but if you look at old maps and photos, you would see that the steep side of the Great Wall, as well as the lookout post, are actually facing China. Normally, the tall side would be used to prevent any invaders from climbing up or picking off enemies with crossbows. But strangely, the taller side faces China, implying that someone else built it. If you don't know, the Tartarian Empire was a society that was extremely advanced for their time. They had discovered how to harvest free energy from the atmosphere, as well as the power of using frequencies to move objects which allowed them to build beautiful architecture. This would explain the construction of the wall. 
This population was destroyed by the people who controlled the oil industry because their free energy technology threatened the control they had over the earth by controlling the energy supply. So, was the Great Wall of China really built by the Tartarian Empire? All this evidence is making many people say. I don't really think we will ever know uh, what the main reason is for them building the Great Wall of China. But if you think about it, if you were to invade whatever city or territory it's protecting, you can just have airships. I mean, it may protect you from people trying to just um, walk in, but it has no protection for airships or even catapults. I don't think it's the best tool to for protection. I think there's another reason for it that we don't know. What do you think? Here's some of the greatest conspiracy theories of all time, part four. The Grinch has a well-known backstory about hating Christmas. However, eventually in the movie, his heart grows three sizes and he loves Christmas once again. But this story may continue longer than we think. It is clear that the Grinch isn't exactly right in the head, but during one of the Grinch's wacky stunts, he could have gotten a head injury. This injury would later take a toll on him as he grew old and caused him to lose his memory. After him and his dog died, they were given a new life in a realm called Halloween Town where they now lived as Jack Skellington in Zero. He later reunites with his love for Christmas, just like he had when he was alive. Both eventually wear a Santa suit, both deliver presents, and both have a doll companion. It may be possible that How the Grinch Stole Christmas and The Nightmare Before Christmas are tied together. So if they're telling us truths in plain sight, what is this telling us then? Hmm. Welcome to Tartaria family. Look at these buildings. And family, you know what I've noticed is the date over here. You see the date? Let's zoom in a little bit. Look at the first one and look at the second one. As you can see, the second one has been chiseled. So normally it's 902, not 1902. And again, we see Tartarian design, but look at this one. Let me cross the street. Again, a very ancient design. And this is the free energy device. Let's zoom in so you can see it. Family, there was an ancient civilization and they are not telling us about it, but the evidences are everywhere around us. This ancient building, they turned it into a museum. Learn more about the ancient civilization here, link in bio. I think there's more to our past that they're not telling us. I think most of them is fabricated. And I think it's a form of control. If you don't know where you came from, you don't know where you're going. It makes me think, like, how are we sure that it hasn't happened yet? I mean, for all we know, it has been happening years even before uh, the news about the Blue Beam project. There's just no way for us to know. Maybe because it's not for us to know or it's just is it the right time just yet. In Philippine mythology, when the supreme being Bethala created seven moons so that each would illuminate one night of the week, the seven moons were so beautiful that mortals loved their radiance. Even monsters, especially the great dragon, Bokanawa, every night, the serpent returned and swallowed the six moons one by one, fearing the world would end if they lost the last moon. The people armed themselves to protect it. They fought the massive serpent, but it swallowed their final warriors helpless they watched as the dragon encircled the last moon with no weapons the people yelled screamed and swore demanding that Bakanawa return their moon shocked by the deafening noise the dragon retreated to its cave the moon returned to the sky lighting up the world once more the dragon waited for the noise to stop to take the moon while the human stayed vigilant every night, ready to make noise if the dragon reappeared. Almost every country has their own uh, version of what a dragon is. And yet some people still think it's a myth. What do you think? 
The world is definitely not ready to hear this, but there is no real picture of the earth. What do you mean? Every picture that's been released that's on Google and or released from NASA is a 3D render. There's only two pictures the earth claims to have in its vault. Let yeah. me show you them right now. You're telling me that my iPhone 3G wallpaper isn't real? That's the blue marble. <laughs> the blue marble, as known from popular media and your iPhone 3, this <laughs> claims to be an actual photo of the Earth from space. It's claiming that? You want me to show you the other one? The other one's hilarious. This is the real one, apparently. What? It's called the pale blue dot. Who took that? <laughs> I've taken Dude, better pictures my whenever my chat. phone is in my pocket accidentally, <laughs> yeah. bro. That's what this looks like. Why do all these pictures look so fake if you go through google there's not a single one that looks even remotely real don't no. we have pictures of other planets i don't think you're ready for that saturn. conversation bro saturn picture okay that is too <laughs> this is made of the really, ps2 you're really not ready for that conversation bro <laughs> so whatever your thoughts are about the flat earthers there is something that makes sense about this video i mean it's true that there are no real pictures of the earth and this goes for flat earthers if there are no actual pictures of earth how can you also be sure that it's flat that no one has ever gone out of the firmament so how can you be sure that it's flat or round and when i say round i mean sphere but nevertheless you really can't be sure right you know his name's not Jesus, right? If you go back to where Jesus was walking the earth and you walked around and said, where's Jesus? Nobody would know who the fuck you're talking about. If you start looking deep into the scriptures, man, one of them says, my children will know my name. Well, his name ain't Jesus. Now the scripture says, seek and ye shall find. Listening to a pastor tell you something isn't seeking. Why am I so big on the name? Well, because if you look at certain scripture, it says, give praise to my name, give glory to my name. What's his name? No, it says Jesus. That's not his name. So everyone says it doesn't really matter. He just, as long as he knows. Look, I didn't read the part in the f scripture that said that. I didn't read that part. I didn't read the part, hey, call me whatever you want. Just call me. Because his name was given to us over 7,000 times. But then at some point in time, way back in about 383 AD, they translated it and, and they were told not to use the name anymore. One of the Ten Commandments is, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Now, what does the word vain mean? It means to make meaningless or useless. How much more useless can a name be if you just stopped using it? You're making it as useless as it can be by not using his name. And he says, don't take the Lord's name in vain, which most people think says, don't say God damn. God damn is it. First of all, God ain't his name. That's a title. Secondly, that's not what it means. It says, don't make God meaningless and useless. But that's not actually what the, the thing said. He basically said, don't make my name meaningless. That was his commandment. And then we are all doing it when we say Jesus. We're all doing it when we say God. Why? Because it's not, that's not his name. Imagine going up to the pearly gates, because I could have just saved all your lives. And there's a big dude up there like this. He's standing there all big and buff as shit. And he goes, what's up? You say, what's up? They say, who are you here to see? You say Jesus, and he goes, and he goes, I don't know who you're talking about. You ever read the scripture where he says, go away, you do not know me? Because if you knew me, you'd know my f***ing name. <clears throat> I'm going to walk up, they're going to be like, who are you here to see? And I'm going to say, I'm here to see Yashua. Yashua. My man Yashua is supposed to meet me here so I can go meet Yahuwah or Yahweh. And if I'm wrong, we're all f***ed. In my opinion, regardless of what your religion is or what your beliefs are, as long as you're being righteous, as long as you don't hurt any other people, and you have goodness in your heart, you do good by other people, it's a good start. Do you believe the earth is flat? I know the earth is flat. Seriously? Uh, astrology and flat earth or true earth are symbiotic. You cannot have one without the other. If you have a ball and you are spinning, flying through space, chasing this fireball, your constellations would change every now and then. 
and our constellations have never changed. The stars have never changed. We have the same 12 zodiac signs that we had back in the Dendera stones in Egypt over 5,000 years ago. We're not moving. Every single ancient society knew this. The Mayans, the Aztecs, the Hindus, the Egyptians, every single ancient culture knew that we live in a geocentric universe not a heliocentric where we are spinning, chasing this ball of fire while all of these other planets are rotating around us, while all of these other stars are rotating around us. If that was the case, Polaris would move, number one, which is the North Star, and it doesn't. Number two, all of the constellations would not rotate solely around Polaris, but they do. Therefore, we are the center of the universe. Believing in the Big Bang Theory is something that is very common today, where yep. people think, you know, we're the product of an accident and that, you know, we don't have a creator. Mm -hmm. We're just here to consume and live our best life and not live up to our potential. But if you're the center of the universe, that means that you're very special. That means that you have a creator who is very conscious and cares about you. And when you see yourself as being watched by these heavenly bodies above you 24 seven, you start to take your life a little bit more seriously. See, this is one of my main concern about the flat earthers is that they seem to all speak in absolute. Like, they all 100% know exactly what the actual shape is. Yes, there are uh, truths to what they are saying. Some of them makes you question a lot of things. But I don't think anyone can be 100% certain of what they're talking about, especially if they... Well, these flat earthers say that there's a firmament, right? So if that's true, no one has gotten past the firmament. And if that's the case, how can you be so sure of what the actual shape is? I'm telling y'all, they always hide the truth in plain sight. Sure is. Make a deal with me, kid. You can have the car and everything that goes along. That's a Freemason sign ring. And, wait a minute, that's obviously the devil. I think there's something more about this ad or any um, theory about these topics. And that's if you allow them to consume you, if you let them live in your head rent free, as they say, it can affect you. It can affect whether you believe in vibrations and all that, your frequency, it can affect you if you let it. Again, if it's just for entertainment, then just take it as that. This may be a message for someone else and it may not be for you. If you're not affected by it, then don't let it affect you. The Titanic was actually a hit job. Real. Yeah, the Titanic was a hit job. So basically what happened was all the richest people in the world in 1912 were supposed to be on this ship. You had the Rothschilds and their basically lackeys at that time who were called J.P. Morgan. There's also another guy who was on that ship. His name was Mr. Uster. He was the richest man in America at that time. He owned 40% of every mortgage in America. Imagine. 40%. This guy's a gangster. I'm not saying he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. But basically this guy was in the way of the Federal Reserve. They wanted to create a central bank. The Rothschilds, they can't just take someone out of that importance. You know, mm. this guy's just too important to shoot. You just can't kill him. Yeah. So what they basically did, they made this big deal, of, you know, everyone going on the ship. And then in the last seconds, all the Rothschilds people exited the ship. Like oh, right before it's about to take off. The ship sunk. The richest guy in America died on the ship. All the politicians who he was basically bribing, all that money evaporated. So they went all to the Rothschild side. Yeah. And then next year, 1913, they started the Federal Reserve Bank because there was no more opposition to it. If this is true, you see how they hide it? They make a movie to romanticize it and try to brainwash the people by saying 
it's an iceberg that made it sink but truth is coming into light and we're slowly but surely finding out what possibly could have happened i'm not saying that this is what actually happened but it's something what do you think so that's it for the video for today. Thank you everyone for staying with me till the end. I hope you enjoyed this last clip and I hope you enjoy the whole video. Uh, doing my best to improve little by little, day by day. And I thank you for your support and I'll see you around.